This video film is going to give you a brief overview of Estonia's largest islands, Saaremaa and Hiiumaa, as excellent geotourism destinations in the central Baltic area. But what does geotourism mean? Geotourism is a relatively new term, and in a strict sense it means geological tourism, which describes resources and activities centered on rock exposures, landforms, and fossils in a wide variety of natural landscapes. However, in a broad sense, the National Geographic Society defines geotourism as nature tourism that enhances the geographical character of a place, its environment, culture, heritage, and the well-being of its residents. So let's take a look at what the islands of Saarema and Hiuma are offering to geotourists. Both islands form a part of the West Estonian archipelago and can be reached from the mainland either by ferry or plane. Saarema is one of the largest Baltic Sea islands, covering an area of 2,673 square kilometers. This is slightly less than the area of Gotland, which is the largest island in the Baltic Sea. Hiuma Island is considerably smaller than Saarema, covering an area of close to 1,000 square kilometers. This makes Hiuma similar in size to Öland Island, offshore Sweden. Both Saarema and Hiuma Islands rest on a core of carbonate rocks of the Ordovician Silurian Age, formed about 416 to 450 million years ago. Those carbonate rocks were formed from a lime mud that deposited in nearshore areas of the Paleobaltic Sea, which flooded the southwestern part of the Baltic Plate. At this time, the Baltic Plate was drifting in, in an equatorial zone, and therefore the warm Paleobaltic Sea flourished with life. This is the first time in geological history when reefs, hundreds of kilometers in length, comparable to today's Great Barrier Reef offshore Australia, were formed. A more than 400 kilometer long reef belt, known as the Silurian Clint, extends from the Estonian mainland over the Muhu and Saarema Islands to the island of Gotland. The main inhabitants in the ancient Paleobaltic Sea of the Silurian Age were marine invertebrates, particularly corals, cabbage-shaped stromatoporoids, bryozoans, brachiopods, which resemble present-day bivalves, and crinoids, also known as sea lilies, the storm-tossed skeletal debris of well-preserved crinoid stem fragments can occasionally be found at very high concentrations, forming rather thick fossiliferous carbonate beds at certain levels. But of worldwide importance are rare findings of sea scorpions, or eurypterids, from the Silurian lagoonal dolostones in Saarema. The eurypterids are extinct aquatic anthropods. These fossils were not actually scorpions, but were just given a descriptive name, sea scorpions, due to their resemblance to present-day scorpions. Another fossil group which has made Saarema famous are findings of Silurian marine jawless fish-like vertebrates, thelodonts, from the Hemiste Quigu quarry. The arrangements of scales of Phlebolepis elegans thelodonts are extraordinarily well preserved on some bedding plains, showing details of thelodont morphology. Because the Precambrian basement made up of crystalline rocks dips very gently southwards throughout Estonia. All younger Paleozoic sedimentary units are exposed on the surface as successive east-westward belts. For this reason, the oldest carbonate rocks can be found only in northern Hiuma, with the boundary between Ordovician and Silurian rocks roughly crossing in the east-west direction through central Hiuma. Saarema Island 
is represented only by Silurian limestones and dolostones, whereas the youngest Silurian rocks are only exposed on the far south Survasar Cape. The carbonate bedrock of both islands is in many places covered by loose sediments left behind by the glaciers of the last ice age. The retreating glaciers also gave birth to the Baltic Sea. The Baltic Sea development history is known to be a series of brackish water sea phases characterized by free water exchange with the North Sea, which alternated with freshwater lake phases. The Kupu Peninsula on Hiyuma was the first dry land spot in this region, apparently emerging from the waters of the Baltic Ice Lake. The shorelines of the Ancelus Lake, formed more than 9,000 radiocarbon years ago, have been recorded in several places on the Kupu Peninsula, as well as on the slopes of the West Sarema Uplands. The first small islands in northern Muhuma are known from the Litorina Sea Age about 6,000 years ago, whereas large areas in central Hiuma can be seen on the Limnia Sea map, dating coastal formations at about 4,000 years ago. But the glacio-isostatic land uplift is still continuing on both islands, with a rate of about 1.5 millimeters per year, leading to the formation of new land areas. Now that you have learned the basic information about the geological history of the islands of Sarema and Hiuma, let's take a closer look at the most remarkable geotourism sites on these islands. On Sarema Island, the most attractive geotourism features are the following. The Kali meteorite crater field, the Silurian carbonate rock cliffs along the seashore, landscapes sculptured by continental ice, and cultural heritage sites. The Kali meteorite craters are certainly the most attractive nature monument in Sarema. The largest impact crater is about the size of a soccer field with a diameter of 110 meters. The crater height, measured from the rim down to the lake bottom, may reach 22 meters. The massive dolostone blocks protruding from the crater's slope give an impression about the magnitude of the impact blast. This impact blast was actually so immense that both the hitting meteorite chunk as well as target dolostones got vaporized immediately. But fortunately, there were also much smaller meteorite splinters hitting ground nearby and forming eight shallow satellite craters. A mining engineer, Ivan Reinwald, examined these satellite craters for years in the beginning of the 20th century until he finally found the first iron meteorite chips in 1937. What makes the Kali craters unique worldwide is that there are only a few known meteorite craters in the world where the crater origin has been proved with full certainty through actually finding meteorites. There are numerous carbonate rock cliffs of the Silurian age along the Sarama and Muhuma island seashores, but the most outstanding ones are Pusina and Ugo cliffs in northern Muhuma, Panga and Ninasa cliffs in northern Sarama, and Kaugatuma and Ohesara cliffs in western Sarema. The height of the coastal cliffs varies considerably. The highest cliff in the West Estonian archipelago is the Panga Cliff in northern Sarema, reaching a height of 21 meters. The appearance of cliffs depends mainly on the rock composition and the number of fractures. Vertical cliffs can be formed from weather-resistant massive dolostones and biohermal limestones, 
while wave-cut notches in several cliffs refer to the presence of softer, argillaceous limestones. The coastal cliffs are in constant change. Severe storms can reshape their outlook considerably. It should be mentioned that carbonate rocks, limestones and dollar stones have been the most precious mineral resources over centuries in Sarema. At first, the carbonate rock blocks were used to build fences and walls for strongholds. The most important stronghold in Sarema was near Valjala village. The contemporary chronicler Henry of Livonia described in his Livonian chronicle this stronghold as the most complicated fortified stronghold to conquer by crusaders, and therefore this was the last one to surrender Germic Teutonic Knights in 1227. There are a lot of varieties of carbonate rocks in Sarema, but mostly karma dolostone has been used as a building stone. The best examples of this massive dollar stone usage can be seen at Valjala and Poida churches. But certainly the most outstanding example is the Kuresara castle. Among the medieval castles in the Baltic countries, this one has survived the best over the centuries. The length of square-based convent house is 43 meters and the defense tower in the northern corner rises 37 meters from the ground. It was built using trimmed Karma dollar stone blocks in the late 14th century. There are several unique island-specific landscapes in Sarema worth visiting. But for nature tourism addicts, the Vilsandi National Park should be the ultimate destination. Vilsandi National Park is located in the western coastal area of Sarema and includes almost 100 small islands and islets. The National Park visitors can get acquainted with a wide variety of landscapes, including dense juniper shrubs at Eriksara Peninsula. In the northwestern part of the National Park, at Hari Light Cape, the landscapes differ quite remarkably. Low coastal dunes are characteristic to the northern tip, while the fastly growing spit made up by extensive cobble beach ridges can be seen in the extreme southwestern end of the Cape. An unusual site is offered by the former Kipsara Lighthouse, which was originally built in the middle of the Cape, but now sticks out of the sea due to the rapidly shifting shoreline. Although twice less in area than Sarema, the Hiuma Island hosts several attractive geotourism sites, like the buried Kartla meteorite crater, the Kaina Kossari Landscape Reserve, Kupu Peninsula, and the Helmerson Erratic Boulders. The Kupu Cape in western Hiuma is the highest upland area of the island. The highest point here, Torni Maggi Hill, reaches 68 meters above sea level and is topped by another 36 meters high whitish lighthouse. From the lighthouse top deck, a beautiful view over the densely forested Kupu Cape can be enjoyed. The Kupu Lighthouse is the oldest one in the Baltic countries. Its construction started already in the beginning of the 16th century it is also considered to be the oldest continually operating lighthouse in the world. The Kaina Kossari Landscape Reserve in southern Hiuma offers several sites for nature tourists. as the Gulf of Kaina is a famous nesting ground for almost 100 different species of birds, there are several observation decks built at Oriaku and Vaimla. A 
another place to certainly visit is the about three kilometers long, narrow gravel ridge covered with gnarled junipers. It is called Saratirp Spit that extends far south to the sea. The small but lovely Kasari Chapel in northeast Kasari is the only functioning stone church with a reed roof in Estonia. The Kärdla meteorite crater is located just a few kilometers southeast of Kärdla town. The four kilometers wide and more than 500 meters deep crater is unfortunately buried by later sediments and on the ground only a crater ring wall is somewhat noticeable in places like Tubala and Antonima. Although not directly observable by the casual tourists, the Kartla crater is most probably one of the best examined meteorite craters in the world through the core material of more than 100 boreholes. The Kartla meteorite impact occurred about 455 million years ago. The unusually high number of large erratic boulders over a half hectare area in northeastern Hioma is called the Helmerson Boulders Field. The place was named after famous geologist Gregor Helmerson, founder and first head of the Russian Geological Survey, who used to study the origin of these boulders. He came up with an idea that these large boulders were brought here by glaciers during the last ice age. He is also an author of beautiful artistic sketches of various boulders all over Estonia. As you are able to see in this short video, there is a great number of interesting geotourism sites on the islands of Sarema and Hiuma in the central Baltic area. You are cordially invited to come and explore these little gems. Yeah.